Hello and welcome to the Becoming Who You Are podcast. I'm excited to have a very special guest with me today and that is Jake from The Voluntary Life. The Voluntary Life is a podcast about finding freedom in an unfree world and you can hear more about this at thevoluntarylife.com by finding the podcast on iTunes or by searching for The Voluntary Life on Facebook. I thought it would be fun to talk to Jake today as I think The Voluntary Life is a fantastic example of what it means to do authentic work. It's a side project that Jake has set up to share his ideas with others and to talk about topics he feels passionate about and I really like the fact that in doing so he's also providing other people with ideas that can help them live more authentic lives. For full disclosure, Jake is my partner and we live together, which means I'm unashamedly doubly excited to have him on the podcast today and to talk about his authentic work. So hello, Jake, and welcome. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me on your show. No problem. So the first question that I wanted to ask you today was what exactly inspired you to start the Voluntary Life podcast? Because I've, I've really enjoyed listening to the episodes that you've produced so far. And I know that it originally started as a book club and then progressed onto you doing solo casts and interviews with other people. So I was wondering if you could walk me through a little bit of how that progressed and um, yeah, how it grew for you and developed. Mm. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I, it started off as a book club and, um, you know, as you know, cause you were involved in the, in the calls, mm-hmm. we were just doing Skype calls with a bunch of friends. Um, and it really, at that point I had no intention of, um, uh, starting the voluntary life as a, as a wider podcast, but after a while, when we were just recording these Skype calls just for fun, I thought it would be interesting to share them, and also I wanted to um, to look at other aspects of finding freedom because we started off looking at more political mm. aspects, you know, the state and um, the principles of voluntarism. But I also wanted to look at um, other aspects of just how to maximise freedom in your life through financial freedom, freedom to work for yourself, psychological freedom, you know, freedom in terms of unschooling and these kinds of things. Mm. And I think because my background's in entrepreneurship, that's an area I felt like, you know, because of my sort of history, I could offer some some thoughts on that. Mm. In particular, um, I sold my business and it gave me a lot of opportunity to do other things. So I thought that's something that I would like to talk about because it might be interesting for other people. But at the same time, I really wanted to learn about other ideas that other people would have because there's a lot, lots of things that when I started a voluntary life, I really didn't know anything about, like unschooling, for example. Um, and so I thought it'd be interesting to interview other people and, and to find mm-hmm. out you know, what other ideas are out there that I could learn from. And the idea of the podcast is really it's a learning process for me as well. The people I'm interviewing are people who have found freedom in their lives in a, in a way that I didn't know about or, or that I find interesting. And um, and I'm also sharing some of the ideas um, that, that, that I have about it. So, you know, it, it originally, um, it was just a book club um, for freedom-oriented books. And as it happened, I didn't know, but there is actually something called the Freedom Book Club and that URL was already taken. <laughs> so I, I thought, well, okay, so I'm not going to make a a web page for this book club with that URL. Um, so what else could this be? And, you know, it was, it wasn't really planned, but it was so much fun doing it that I just decided to make it a more regular podcast. It's a happy accident. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what I really like about what you've just said is the fact that, um, the way that you commented on how it's not just you talking about your experience and sort of telling other people what you know, but it's also a really, really great opportunity for you to learn as well and for you to kind of expand your horizons. I also really like the fact that you focus on personal, so the person, people's personal lives. So mm. there is a lot of um, content online about uh, politics and you said that you started from a political, um, a political standpoint and talking about, you know, mm. political freedom. Um, but actually what's more important is freedom in your own life. So the world is the way it is right now. Uh, you can't change that necessarily, but what can you do in your life right now to be more free? Yeah. And the more, absolutely. The more I, um, I think that I, my experience has been that the more I can think about freedom in those terms, the more meaningful and useful and, and it is to me and the more mm. traction it has in my life. 
It's like I remember when I first started reading about politics, I very much thought about society as being something out there and sort of trying to understand that thing that was out there. Mm. Whereas actually, you know, what's relevant to me is the society that is my life, you know, me yeah. and my relationships. And that means my personal relationships and my working relationships and so forth. So all of these questions about how free... Uh, people are are really relevant in terms of thinking about yourself how free mm. am I and what what can I do to to have the most choice about my life and to really be able to choose my life that's what I see as mm. you know the voluntary life is to, is being having the ability to have a lot of choices to choose from and make your own choices about what life you want to lead yeah absolutely I couldn't agree more and for me that's that's exactly what living an authentic life is as well. It's just being aware of what choices you have and having the freedom, giving yourself permission and freedom to make those choices. Mm. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, it's what my experience has been. It's been great fun finding out about all of the aspects of choice that you have that you mm. have, don't even really think about. Yeah. You know, that don't even necessarily occur to you. You know, there's lots and lots of ways of making a living that give you a lot of freedom and personal choice that don't even occur to some people, be that freelancing or starting your own business and so forth. And there's lots and lots of ways of, of for example, having freedom within your personal relationships and your friendships that um, I think, you know, the, talking to people has, has really helped and given me lots of ideas from through doing the podcast and through doing the interviews yeah I, I love that and I love the way that you've taken it you've sort of taken your passion from something that's quite abstract like politics and society and really really brought it down to a personal level and I think in a way um I you know I've heard of some of the feedback that you've had from other people and I've heard other people talk about your podcast and I know it's in a way that really impacts other people in their day-to-day -day lives as well which is the most important thing because that's that's the life that we're living is the day-to-day -day life. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not, I, I still, I still um, love to read sort of uh, philosophical books about uh, society and the state and those things. But really, th that is so much less important to me than thinking about things that really have a difference. Like, you know, your, your financial independence your ability to live where you want to, to do the kind of work that makes mm. you, you know, that you feel passionate about, to have great relationships. These are the kinds of freedoms I think that really now um, excite me and interest me and finding out more practical knowledge about those things is what really drives um, my interest. Yeah, and I, I really, um, it's really interesting that you say that and you, you sort of specifically say practical knowledge because I guess something that, I've been thinking about recently and I was actually talking to someone about this the other day is that it's great to have all this choice it's really liberating and it's also terrifying mm. because especially if you come from a background where everything has always been very structured and your life has sort of had this traje trajectory of you know you go to school then you go to college and then you get a job and you settle down and you know your job is a specific kind of job and you work your way up you know quote the career ladder etc it's really terrifying to step out of that and to realize actually, I mean, it's a cliche, but I can do anything. Mm. I can do anything that I want to. It's perfectly possible. Mm. And suddenly there's almost too much choice and it can actually be quite paralyzing. Mm. Yeah. I think that's, um, that's also why sometimes if you do um, start to really explore the choices and options that you have, Unfortunately, it can also be quite threatening to other people because seeing yeah. seeing you make those choices can um, present a lot of questions for other people about the choices that they're making. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's almost like a, a mirror, isn't it? Like a reflection of their own lives. And if they see people um, breaking out of the mould mm. and doing things a bit differently and also pursuing things that they are passionate about, that can be really tough for other people to see, especially if they've had to sort of put aside or felt like they've had to put aside their own passions to do the right thing yeah or do the proper thing or the expected thing it can be really um troubling and i think we all see people going for what they really want in life yeah and and the thing is i think we all know at some deep level that that disruptive aspect of really you know taking choice 
yourself can have on other people. We know that the, how threatening that can be for other mm. people. And I think some of the fear that we feel is also to do with the impact that it's going to have on other relationships if we yeah. make uh, choices that, that, you know, that we want to that are outside the norm. If we go into business for ourselves or do um, you know, unschooling or, or um, these kinds of things, we know that that's going to fundamentally make other people question, like, well, I keep talking about why I hate my job, so why aren't I going into business mm. myself? Or I know my kids are unhappy, so why haven't I chosen to try and give them, you know, a, educational freedom in that sense? And I think that's sort of, you know, one of the things that that is um, one of the fears that we have is, you know, what impact will it have on myself uh, and my relationships yeah. if I do something unusual? Because yeah. everyone knows that there's that that thing called the tall poppy syndrome, mm. you know, where the tall poppy that sticks out is the one that gets, gets cut down. down. Absolutely. And that's a, you know, that's an understandable fear to have because you have to plough through a lot of, um, you know, negative feedback from other people who find even you making a specific choice challenging. You know, it's so much more challenging to do something with your own life that is a leading by example of finding more freedom than it is to write a philosophical treatise about freedom in the abstract. Because anyone can, you know, that that's actually not challenging to other people because that's just mm. some writing. But doing something yourself, you know, to have great relationships or to, you know, to have uh, independence, financial freedom, these kinds of things, that's much more challenging. Mm. And I guess it's because they're things that you actually, you do have complete control over mm. right, right here, right now. These are the things that you can control and take responsibility for and used to create the life that you really want absolutely and that actually leads me really nicely into um something else that i wanted to ask you about because you you did a specific podcast about this issue or about this topic called investing in friendships mm. and i was really struck by that because what you basically say in that is kind of what you've been saying here that you know it's really who you surround yourself with is really really important and I'm really struck by the fact that, you know, human beings are social beings. You know, we need social contact with other people. That's one of our basic Mm. inherent needs. And so I can really understand that fear that, you know, if you're doing something a little bit different, if you have this, you know, burning desire to go and travel the world or unschool your kids or do something that's not necessarily considered conventional, I guess traveling the world is Mm. quite conventional now, but um, not for everyone. Mm. Um, but if you want to go and do something like that, there, I can imagine there is this real fear of um, being criticised by the people around you or being almost sort of semi-ostracised or viewed as sort of an outsider by them. Mm. Um, because that does sort of tap into fear about not having one of our fundamental needs met, which is need for acceptance, um, need for community. Um, so what I really liked about your podcast is how, this podcast in particular, is how you talk about surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you Mm. and who, you know, share your values. Yeah. And who are going to be a positive influence on your life and not sort of detract from what your passions are or try and, you know, using the tall poppy metaphor, try and cut you down. Yeah, I think it's so essential and it's such a... It's one of those choices that that we do really have... uh, actual control over ourselves whatever circumstances you're in you can do something about your friendships your personal relationships your romantic relationship you know your family relationships you can actually these personal relationships you can make an impact on and i I think for me the 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 level of freedom you have there's two sort of aspects to it there's in any kind of freedom there's two things that determine it i think one is the amount of choice that is potentially open to you mm. and the second is how free you feel to actually make those choices mm. so for example when it comes to friendships you know if you live in a really small community um where it's a you know a village type community and you have very limited internet access or Let's just take, for example, physical friendships where you can actually meet up with the people and discount the internet for a minute. But let's just say you live in a really, really small village or something. Your actual choice is going to be quite limited because there's only so many people that you can have relationships. And I guess, and this is just total hypothesizing on my part, but, you know, we have obviously evolved to be able to try and work out how to get along with the people that we are in a small community with because a lot of our 
prehistory was spent in small gathering hunter gathering type communities so we know that we have to kind of put up with people and uh, to a certain extent uh, limit ourselves and our personality our desires our true selves within a small context now we have the opportunity to live in much much bigger communities we can live in big cities where there are people with all sorts of diverse interests and we've got the internet too right so we can mm-hmm. connect to people across space and make and have you know that opportunity to meet people who really share our values and who really share our uh, are willing to accept us for who we are so we have the choice the second part of though is it is feeling able to actually utilize that choice because yeah. even if you live in a big city where you can go up on meetup.com and find people who share your interests and you can go online to discussion boards and find people who you know value the same things as you do or who at least are willing to accept you for what your your values are you can do all of that but there's still there's still a certain sense of obligation that we have mm. to long-term relationships that we may find ourselves in mm. which i think is 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 very very uh scary and difficult to to break you know yeah. and to actually go out and find it's hard it's it's frightening to test your friendships to see whether or not if you are really authentic you will be accepted yeah because there's yeah. a fear of rejection and it's also very hard to you know to to adjust your friendships to towards those people who do share your values even if you live in a place where you have the choice actually taking advantage of that choice is something that i think is um you know is so important but it is is also still quite hard to do absolutely and i think you know like with all obligations in life or things that people feel obligated to do there there is this mindset that i think can develop as well where people substitute choose to would have to so I have to do this like I have to do the laundry no you're choosing to do it you know you might feel like you have to because you haven't got any clothes left or whatever but you are so it's a choice that you're making so it's the same with relationships it's like well I have to go and meet up with them I have to give them a call no that's still a choice that you make every step of the way and I think it's really easy to feel that sense of obligation and feel like I have to when actually you do have a choice and if you, I mean, if you feel some resistance to doing that, and if you feel the have to kicking in, that's quite a good indication, perhaps, of you know where that relationship is at right now. Absolutely, absolutely, and I think you know there are um, there are so many ways in which your your true feelings about your friendships sort of come through. You know, with the, sort of when you when you see their name come up on on your phone mm. you know how you feel about that when you think about the fact that you um you know you haven't got back to them about meeting up how you feel about that and you know you either get a feeling like oh great this is fantastic i'm really glad that this person is phoning me and i really want to meet up with this person again i want to make that happen yeah or you get that sort of sense of dread and exhaustion well i suppose i should I ought to, yeah. yeah and yeah and that's really sad because i mean that's that's obviously not going to be fun for the other person either because no. you you will show that in the way that you relate to them yeah and i guess the it's not being authentic either because you know you're not you're not really being authentic with yourself if you're kind of making yourself do something under the pretense of well I should or I have to Mm. and you're not being authentic with the other person either if you you know rock up pretending that everything's fine and you're happy Mm. to be there and you know they're going to know on some level that that's not the case and it's not actually going to do anything for the friendship yeah and I do I do think what you said earlier on though is is really really important and really true about just how social we are and how important it is for us to have Mm. support because I think if you you know if you want to um, sort of in- increase your happiness in your friendships, it's so important that you you have support and that you have a, a sense of community or, for want of a better word, whatever. You've got a, a network of friends and support around you, and so it's one of those things where I don't think you know it's a question of like you, you suddenly sort of 
wake up one day and realize this isn't giving me the support I need and just drop all your friendships and go and find something else. I think it's it's got to be a sort of a process of continual improvement, you know? Absolutely. I think as human beings, we always are in process because we're always constantly shifting and changing. And so there is no sort of um, end date or finish line for this. It's a constant process. Yeah. And I guess what we're, just to sum up kind of what we're really talking about here is, you know, if you want freedom and authenticity in your friendships and your relationships, you, it's all about, it really boils down to making conscious choices and having self-responsibility. So taking responsibility for having that choice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the two things that I sort of think you, you can practically do about mm. that is, Number one is you've got to be in a a situation where you actually have choice. So in other words, you need to open yourself up to networks where you're going to meet people who share your values, whether that's by being in in a place where you can actually meet those people. And typically, you know, bigger cities are places where you get a lot more choice, but you also have the Internet and all the discussion boards and everything like that. So firstly, you've got to actually open yourself up to, to those relationships that are going to be rewarding to you. To, so that you have choice in your relationships. Yeah. But the second thing is about actually making that choice, about actually investing in those friendships with people who really do give you, you know, the support, the love and, you know, the acceptance that you need and divesting from those relationships where you don't get that. Yeah. Because even if you're sort of in a place where you could develop friend- friendships with people who you feel a lot more support from, you may have those relationships, those sort of historical friendships or relationships where friends, family, uh, you know, even sadly, often romantic relationships yeah. where you're still very enmeshed in that relationship, even if you're, if you're honest with yourself, even if it's not giving you what you need to be authentic yourself. And, and actually, you know, making that conscious choice to actually make the shift towards the, those, towards those people who give you, you know, what you need and away from those people who don't is a, is a difficult and painful process, but yeah. that's the other necessary part of it. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts about that. I think that's it's really helpful for me to hear, and I hope it's, I'm sure it'll be helpful for other people as well. So that's it for now, but you can tune in again next week to hear us talk about more topics associated with finding freedom in our lives and living authentically. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.